Hello Cloud Gurus! If you're watching this video, it means you're probably interested in taking the new AWS Certified Data Engineer Associate exam that just arrived in beta in late November 2023. Well, I took the beta exam the day it was released to bring you everything you need to study for and pass this associate level certification. My name is David Blocker. I'm an eight times AWS certified training architect here at Pluralsight, and this is the inside scoop on the AWS certified data engineer exam. First, let's talk about what this certification is and how you can sit for the exam. The Data Engineer Associate Certification is set to replace the Data Analytics Specialty Certification, which is being retired in April of 2024. And right now, through January 12th, 2024, you can take the beta version of the exam for half the normal price. After that, you'll have to wait until April to pay full price for the standard version of the exam. So this seems like an update to the Data Analytics Specialty Certification. Why did AWS move this to an associate level exam? Well, with the increased adoption of customized AI platforms and machine learning tools, data, specifically meaningful, focused, and clean data, is becoming increasingly valuable. On top of that, according to the most recent DICE Tech report, demand for data engineer roles increased by 42% year over year. Data engineering is no longer a specialty skill. It's at the heart of developing solutions on AWS. This exam is a grueling 85 detailed scenario-based questions over the course of 170 minutes. The questions are all either multiple choice or multiple select. There are no prerequisites to taking the exam, but it's recommended that you have two to three years of experience in data engineering and at least one to two years of AWS experience. Just like other AWS exams, you can take this at a testing center, in person, or you can take it at home with an online proctoring system. Now that we understand what the exam is and how to take it, let's get down to business and talk about what's on it. The exam consists of four domains, data ingestion and transformation, data store management, data operations and support, and data security and governance. Check out the exam guide in the video description for a full breakdown of the skills covered in this exam. In this video, I'll show you the top five services you need to know going into the exam. At number one is AWS Glue. Glue is the most widely covered service on the exam, and this is a big shift from the data analytics specialty exam. AWS Glue is a fully managed serverless data integration service that can catalog data from many sources and deliver them to your data lake or data warehouse. You can also query catalog data directly as a single source. For this exam, you'll need to be very familiar with AWS Glue. Glue crawlers, jobs, workflows, Glue Studio, and Glue Data Brew. Coming in at number two is Amazon Redshift. Redshift is a fully managed petabyte scale data warehouse service in the cloud. Redshift can be used to gain business insights on vast amounts of data moments after it's uploaded. For this exam, you'll need to understand Redshift clusters, security, streaming ingestion, Redshift serverless, and Redshift spectrum. At number three is Amazon Athena. Athena is an interactive query service designed to easily analyze data stored in your S3 buckets. With Athena, you can run ad hoc SQL queries against structured, semi-structured, and even unstructured data. You can even query Glue data catalogs and use Athena as a source for data visualization in Amazon QuickSight. Athena is fully serverless and a great solution if you need to run ad hoc or infrequent queries against data that resides in S3. You'll need to understand Athena integrations, Athena notebooks, and how to leverage query results. You'll need to know when to use Athena over Redshift and how to create new tables from the results of Athena queries. At number four, it's an oldie but a goodie, Amazon S3. S3 is all over this exam, and it's the foundation of data storage on AWS. 
In addition to its interactions with other services, you'll need to know S3's features inside and out. You'll need to know about data security and encryption, S3 storage classes, data lake management, and how to use S3 endpoints in your VPC. Finally, at number five is Amazon EMR. EMR, or Elastic MapReduce, is a big data solution for transforming and analyzing petabytes of data. EMR can integrate with multiple data sources and leverages open source tools like Spark and Hive to perform data workloads. You'll need to know when it's more appropriate to use Glue, how to achieve cost savings, and how to create a Hive meta table in EMR. Honorable mentions go to Lake Formation, Kinesis Data Streams, and Step Functions as services that are also heavily featured. To study for this exam, I recommend using Pluralsight's Data Analytics Specialty course as a foundation, and then follow up with materials around Lake Formation and AWS Glue. Or you can wait for Pluralsight's new Data Engineer Associate course, coming soon in 2024. So we're left with one question. Did I pass? I actually don't know. In fact, for a beta exam, you may not know your score until up to 90 days after the beta exam closes. So that would be somewhere around early April. But if you're confident in your skills and ready to be one of the first AWS certified data engineers, taking the beta exam is a great way to get ahead of the curve and save some money. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. Good luck on your learning journey and keep being awesome.